Hey friends, before we get into today's episode, I want to share with you another great podcast. No Straight Path, hosted by Ashley Menzies Babatunde, is brought to you by the HubSpot Network. By shedding light on the stories behind the shiny resumes, social media highlights, and job titles, No Straight Path aims to humanize success from the millennial perspective. Featuring guests from all walks of life, No Straight Path aims to inspire conversations around the nuanced perspective of success. An episode you might want to check out is Building Safer, More Equitable Workplaces with Lexi B. In it, Alexandria Butler, otherwise known as Lexi B, shares how professional theater classes prepared her to tap dance for the masses, despite being introverted by nature. And she also shares the unexpected introduction she had to the tech industry. Listen to No Straight Path wherever you get your podcasts. You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Hey friends, hey, welcome, welcome back to the show. Let's get into it. So today in the guest chair, I have Kat Peoples. Kat is an actor, producer, and businesswoman from Detroit, Michigan. She's a graduate of Howard University with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in theater who has worked in music, fashion, television, and theater as a talent and producer. Now, I first learned about Kat's work in voice acting via her Instagram story. This is why it's so important to post what you do. She did a behind the scenes of her recording voiceovers for the Potter's House. And that's when I realized that she does voiceovers and she started to post more about her work. And I started to learn about this world of voice acting. I was so intrigued. I've learned so much from her and I thought you guys might be inspired and learn from her as well. Sometimes when you are an artist, you don't even know about all the different avenues you can use to use your instrument. And Kat is one of those people that has exposed that for me. So in today's episode, you'll learn how she went from viewing voice acting as a side hustle to it becoming her main hustle. Let's get right into it. Welcome officially to the guest chair, Kat. Thank you. Glad Thank to you be for here. Being here. Thanks for having me. Yes. <laughs> so as you know, I just stumbled upon this world learning about voice acting, right? I always thought mm-hmm. of voice acting as, I guess, people doing animated movies. And mm-hmm. it was because I was following you, follow you on Instagram, and I saw you post behind the scenes of you recording one of your <laughs> voiceover spots. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, what is this world? <laughs> First of all, I didn't know you did this. What's this world? Then mm-hmm. I went to your webinar. And I was just blown away. So I had to bring it to the Side Hustle Pro community to learn about this world and this side hustle. So how did you fall into it? (laughs) Um, Okay, so I'll take you back. Yes. I fell into it like I went to school for acting. So I've been Mm -hmm. acting since I was a little girl. I went to Howard and got my BFA in acting. So acting is is a part of me. That's 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 my world. But to take you back to even how I got into voiceovers, it really kind of happened before I realized that it was actually happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so even when I was like second, third grade, you know, we would uh, read out loud in class. Like I would be the one that always had my hand raised to read out loud. I love to hear my voice, especially if they had the big paragraphs with all the exclamation points. Like <laughs> I wanted to read that paragraph <laughs> of super fudge. Um, so I've always like taken into like, reading aloud or, or announcing something, even in high school, um, I would do the morning announcements, you know, so, you know, I never made it to my first hour class, but I always made it to school, (laughs) senior year in time to do good morning cast tech today is. (laughs) So I was doing the morning announcements in high school. And then even when I'm going into college, I did a lot of theater work. Uh, but like there was one show where it was an all male cast and one female and the one female voice was uh, a voiceover. She was over the intercom and I got cast for that. So I just found myself always behind the mic somehow hosting different things. So it was, that was just something that was always in me. Um, and then, you know, once I, when you were doing that, did you start to 
think of your voice as an instrument? Were you even aware of what was happening? Were you doing anything to make your voice better or anything the like that? Moment, not really technical wise, like wanting to study it. But I do remember in church, there was like a ball that we had and I had to announce someone. And yeah. I remember announcing it. And th- for the first time, I remember hearing myself like, oh my God, my voice sounds so rich. Like, I just remember that feeling like, yes. and so that was the moment where it was like, ah. I, I have a, I have, this is an instrument. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I was never, I could sing, but I was never really the singer, mm-hmm. you know, uh, doing, you know, you know, growing up. Uh, but it really, when, when I, when I had that moment, I kind of really thought about it. And then it wasn't until college when I took like voice acting classes, you know, specifically, uh, in, in my program, um, in the fine arts building where I realized it was an instrument. So I had to start learning how to take care of it, doing vocal warm ups. But again, it really wasn't for voiceover. I just thought it was just for just acting in general. So, yeah. So I would say college is when I really started. Now, As you were going through college, what was the career path that you saw for yourself? I'm always interested in this because it's like acting. You already know as an actor that you have to have another job. You know, it's almost like, you know, acting is... I wasn't that person. Really? I wasn't that person. (laughs) Yeah, no. And it's so funny. My high school teacher, Marilyn McCormick, uh, Mm -hmm. she's the reason that I took acting serious. And it was just, Mm. we knew like, if this is what we were going to (laughs) do, we were going to do it. And and thank God for people like um, Marilyn McCormick would put us in the, the right rooms and the right uh, places where we can excel. Um, I always knew that it was going to be a journey. You know okay. what I mean? Um, but I always had like this entrepreneurial spirit where, and then also just, I knew, you know, that I had different gifts that was still like a part of storytelling and being creative. And so my high school teachers, my senior year in high school, she pulled me to the side and she said, you like money. I said, I do. (laughs) And she said, "Um, and you like to like get things done. So she Mm -hmm. put me in contact with someone that was doing a a, a movie in Detroit so that I could be her assistant. It was a producer. Um, So in college, I always knew that I was going to act and I never worried about like, oh, am I going to have to be a teacher and an actor or be a social worker? It was, I knew I was going to be in the entertainment industry. Um, and thank God I had parents that were supportive. That was like, all right, cat, you know, all right, there you go. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Um, but I also knew that there were other parts of the business that I was really good at. Mm -hmm. Um, And even at Howard, you know, you, you majored in acting, but the program is set up for you to learn all the different areas of theater. So while people were out on the yard, you know, stepping and enjoying Friday at three o'clock, I was in class hanging lights for a show, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or learning how to prep the sound or learning costuming or learning makeup for the stage. So The entertainment industry as a whole, I always knew I would be in it into some capacity and I would never not have a job. I stage managed during uh, college on shows. If I I wasn't in the show, I was stage managing it. So I knew I was going to be somehow in the entertainment industry and I knew I was... I knew I was a good actor and it was just something like I wasn't doing it for money, really. You know what I mean? So I wasn't worried like, huh? You know what I mean? Uh But... I knew I could stay in the industry. So Mm -hmm. in college, to answer your question, I always knew I was going to act up until senior year in college. I had this random thought. I did, uh, we have, you know, everybody know how our homecomings is like a staple. Yes. (laughs) And uh, I was hired to do the gospel concert. I had to put the gospel concert together for um, You were like the producer? I was the producer and it was my first live production that I was in charge of getting the talent, you know, getting the back line, all of that good stuff. And I remember I hired Mary Mary. They were the ones who uh, came at the time um, in a group called Real who opened up for them. And uh, it was like the first time the the gospel concert sold out during homecoming. (laughs) And it was then where I was like, oh no, I want to produce now. So I... (laughs) So it was like my senior year in college, I kind of switched like, I think I want to be a producer. So yeah. (laughs) 
the thing is with entertainment, there's so many roles you can play. Yeah. It's almost yeah. overwhelming. I remember coming out of college, I did like this summer program before I went into my mm-hmm. full time. And I wanted to be everything that summer. I wanted to be a publicist, <laughs> a producer. I mean, we were just exposed to every single job and I was yeah. confused. <laughs> so what did you actually do, though, once you graduated? So once I graduated, I went to Philadelphia first to start okay. stage manager. So I don't want I don't want to say I quit acting, but I started mm-hmm. to focus on the production side of it mm-hmm. um, just because opportunities like, you know, came to me. Um, so I random I was volunteering for a conference that was in D.C. my senior year and someone overheard me say stage management and the guy came up to me <laughs> was like you stage manage I was like I mean I can stage manage he was like I need someone so he pulled me to the main stage it was, it was the gospel heritage Pro, uh, conference and it was in like the big um you know where they have the conventions and things right it convention was in center. DC. The convention center yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway he pulled me to the main stage I end up stage managing all of the concerts that week for the uh for that what? conference Um, And then I I stayed connected with him and sent him my resume. And then he sent me a job to Philly and I went to Philly and worked at uh, at Freedom Theater for six months. Then he got me a job working for three more tenors that was off Broadway in New York at the time. So I moved to New York. Well, I moved to Jersey, but I worked in New York. (laughs) And when I graduated from high school, I high school, college, I went directly into the production side of everything. Uh, And it wasn't until like my couple of years where I did a lot of production management work, general management work with theater and tours where I was like, oh, I miss acting. So I quit <laughs> the production side and I went back to acting. First audition was a, a, a show called All American Girls that was off Broadway and I booked it. And it was just like that sign that said, okay, I am supposed to still do this. So yes. I always had those signs. I'll put it to the side and then I'm like, okay, I miss it. I'll come back and pick it back up. And there, there that sign was again, like you're supposed to be doing this because it always just, I don't want to say it came easy to me, but it came mm-hmm. like purpose naturally you know. yeah um, yeah 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 and I, I um, like the fact that there's a certain confidence that you exude and I, I think you probably need that a lot in this industry right I mean yeah if you're if I, your mindset is kind of what I assume most actors were we're like oh I'm not gonna book a lot you know I'm gonna mm-hmm. have to keep grinding because mm-hmm. you know I'm gonna get a lot of no's before I get a yes but you're just kind of like you know what let me go out and then you book it <laughs> You put the audition. It. I know. I what know. is that? What, what, how it's, how it's, do you do it's, that? It's favor. <laughs> yes, it it's is. Favor. It, favor is important. Um, and I'm not going to say it's, it always comes easy to me because it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's how I was able to identify my true purpose, yes. you know, in life and what I'm supposed to be doing. Not necessarily what I know how to do because I can do a lot and I've done <laughs> a lot. But um I don't even want to call it just acting, just being a joy spreader. I know mm-hmm. that, you know, I am that and acting is just one vehicle that allows me to spread joy. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And and tell stories um, and, and make people feel um, some kind of way, feel good or think yes. a little different or think a little differently or think, you know, about something in a different perspective. Um, so you definitely have to have a confidence, but I think that's just in every field, you know, you have to know that this is what you're supposed to be doing. That's true. Um, and, and also know that there's going to, it's going to be a ride, you know, and sometimes we're going to be cruising. Sometimes we're hitting a lot of bumps, you know, that's, that's just a part of it. Yeah. But you definitely, I say all careers, you have to have that confidence, but it is a different type of confidence that you have to have going into this entertainment industry and specifically as an actor, because, you know, you will get a lot of no's. Um, But I always, you know, remove myself from it and know that, you know, it's a product that I'm selling. And my product just so happens to be me, my my talent, my voice. I want to go back to something you said about knowing what you're supposed to be doing. And it's not necessarily what you're good at or Mm -hmm. what you are driven to in that moment. How Mm -hmm. do you parse that out? Because I find a lot of side hustlers run into that. When you have multi-passions, you're interested in different things. That doesn't mean that's what you necessarily should be doing. Yeah, well, it, it, and it really, so I, I really feel like I figured out my purpose when I was able to distinct, uh, to, to, to identify what my gifts were mm-hmm. versus what my skills or talents were. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like with your gifts, you never get tired. It's just in you. Um, and I feel like your skills and your talents is just something you do. 
You know what I mean? And it's connected to your gift. And that's why I say, like, I realize my gift is I'm a joy spreader. I am going to spread joy in whatever I do. If I'm around my friends, if I'm at work, if wherever I am, if I'm with my child, I, my pastor said to me, you're a funster. I know that about (laughs) myself. You know, I also know I'm a dot connector. I like Mm -hmm. to connect the dots. I'm an executor. You have an idea. I'm going to help you execute it. Like that's just, it's in me. Um, You know, I know that I have a lot of wisdom, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And I think my skills, being able to act, do voiceovers, being able to produce, uh, put things together. Those are my skills, but also I can juggle my, my family. You know what I mean? (laughs) You know what I mean? So I think when you identify your gifts, which are not necessarily what you do, but it's who you are, the, the things that God, uh, molded you to be those very unique things about you that maybe it's not for everybody else. When you identify that, then it'll allow you to stay on task so that you're not doing everything that you know how to do it. And, and that was me for a long time, for years. I did it all. And, and it was because my why, I thought I knew my why. And I realized your why never changes. It never changes. If your why changes, that's not your why. Mm. You know what I mean? For a long time, I thought, you know, my why was, oh, I got to get money or have time where I could be freed up. Or there was a, 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 a time in my life where, okay, my why is I have to make enough money so I can take care of my son. You know what I mean? All of that. But no, my why, God, what is my purpose? Why am I here? My here my, I'm here is to honor you. And how do I honor God? So what, how did God make Cat? He made yeah. me to be a joy spreader. That's what yes. he put in me. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. He, he, he gave me wisdom. You know what I mean? Administration, being able to put things together. And so now that I realize and I understand my why, everything that I do has to be connected to that, yes. regardless if it's activities, work, whatever it is. Um, so, Yeah. <laughs> that is so well stated, and that was a mini sermon and word right there, y'all, <laughs> that we all need sometimes because, like you said, your gift is not tied to an occupation. It's not mm-hmm. tied to anything you do. So sometimes yeah. we get caught up and feel lost because we're like, if I'm not a consultant, what am I? If I'm not mm-hmm. a banker, what am I? That's not your mm-hmm. gift. Dig mm-hmm. deeper. And mm-hmm. once you realize that, it will help and comfort you when you're feeling fear or anxiousness because yeah. you can always, always find something to do to earn money yeah. once you know your gift. Yep. So focus once on you know learning gift. that gift. Tap it into yourself. So now let's get back to the acting part. Yes. All right, mini <laughs> sermon over. <laughs> Sorry. So now you're acting, you're in New York and are you doing mainly plays or did you start also voice acting again? No, no. Believe it or not, when I got back into my acting bag, I said, okay, let me stop doing production for a while. Okay. Um, it was theater work. I was on the stage a lot. I did a lot of off-Broadway work, but I was also doing a lot of commercials, like on-camera commercial work. Okay. I don't, I don't even know how that came about. You know, you get an agent and then they just start sending you on jobs. So it's not like, people say, what type of actor are you? Are like, a theater actor, a television actor. I am an actor. Where the job is, that's where I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. Where the story is, that's where I'm going to go. So it just so happens that my first few years, where most of my career in New York has been commercial acting, mm-hmm. I did a lot of on-camera work, some theater work. Um, I still haven't really gotten into the television and film um, world. That is next, and that is my focus um, for the coming years. Okay. Um, but it was definitely... Um, on camera commercial work and uh, and theater work, uh, but I would still go on like auditions for voiceovers every every now and then. I would even book you know some jobs every now and then, uh, but I wasn't booking them all the time. And and I, I realized later is because. Again, I knew I had this natural talent of my voice is good. I, you know, I speak well. I can tell a story with my voice. But there's also techniques that I realized that I needed to learn that's different. Yes. The theater world is different from the television world than the voiceover world. So yes. there were te- techniques that I realized that um, 
I had to learn. And I actually realized that at an audition, I went to an audition and the guy who was auditioning to me was like, you know, you have a good voice, but I just feel like you need to learn some techniques. Like there's ways to throw a line away at the end. You know, you don't always want to hit it. And, you know, it's different from theater work. Uh, so he introduced me to a class that he, um, he had, and I started to go to classes and started to learn the technique, um, of voiceover acting, which is Ooh. very different from, <laughs> yes. And so this this is what I started to learn when I took your webinar, because mm -hmm. I was like, wait a second, I have a mic. I speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe I should look into this as a side hustle. Yes. So, um, even though, you know, most people don't like the sound of their own voice. Well, not most, but many. And I'm included in that. But <laughs> I was encouraged to explore it. And I learned yeah. that, wow, there is a lot to this industry. And there's a lot of skill and technique that I need to explore, study, yeah. learn. Yeah. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about that? Like the process oh, and the things you need to explore? Oh, uh, well, one, there's so many different avenues in just the voiceover market. Yes. Um, and I always tell people, don't try to do it all at once. You know, you mm -hmm. have animation, you have narration, you have commercial voiceover, you have um, announcers, you have, there's just so many different avenues. So the first thing I would say for people is, get training, you know, yes. definitely get some training, uh, but just kind of figure out where do you think your voice fits? You mm -hmm. know, um, I kind of really, you know, started off heavy in the commercial world, you know, so you would hear my voice in a lot of different brands, like, you know, the household name brands. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I started to realize that my agent started sending me things for like narration work, which is a little different. Your voice mm -hmm. register, you know, goes in a different place. Um, you know, then there was like, you know, announcery things that, you know, I would go up for. So I would, I would say, figure out where you may land in it all. You know, you may have some people where they feel like they're, uh, they just have a nice school teacher voice. So maybe <laughs> audio books, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, would be mm -hmm. good for you or narration would be good for you. Um, some people, I have a friend, he's very good at enunciating and things of that nature. Um, so I would say go the corporate route or, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of like uh, medical uh, work that's out there where, you know, you're doing internal industrial videos for mm -hmm. healthcare companies uh, where you need to be a little bit more informative, a little yes. bit more polished. Whereas commercial work, you don't really, you don't want to be polished at all. You don't want to sound announcer. You want to sound like the everyday friend, mm -hmm. the girl next door. You know what I mean? Somebody yeah. that's familiar. Um, so I just think um, figuring out where your voice lands and then start getting some training. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, when you started out, did you think about the voice acting piece as like a side hustle in your acting journey? It was definitely a side hustle because it wasn't something that I was as confident in as I was with on-camera commercial work or theater work. Mm -hmm. um, it was just like when the audition would come in, so much so, I was kind of like, oh, audition came in, I would grab my phone, record myself on the vi on, on my uh, voice memo and send it, out, send it out and not realize why I would never get booked. You doing it on your phone, <laughs> it don't sound good, you know? So I didn't know, it was just like, this is if it comes. And mm -hmm. then... COVID happened, which was the pivot where mm -hmm. um, everything shut down in the industry except voiceovers. Like that was the only area that where people were actually still working. Like no one was doing theater, that the theater world was shut down. No one was even doing on-camera work. It was all voiceovers. Um, and the production houses had to get very creative with how they were going to shoot different things. So luckily, thank God, I had equipment at home. I had an old microphone that I bought years ago, but I never used. Um, and they started sending me work and <laughs> God just started opening doors, opening doors and just letting the rain fall. So it started out as a side hustle, but then there was a shift that, that shift there was happened. A shift, right. And that COVID. was COVID. Yeah. Right. Because even right before COVID, my main source of income, I was working as assistant to a chairman for a production company. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I also owned a franchise, <laughs> a fun bus franchise. Uh, so I would like go to auditions just, you know, okay, I'm done with this. Let me run to an audition here and there. So it was just kind of like, you know, if it comes, it comes. If, it, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I was chasing other things. Um, and then when everything was shut down, like I wasn't worried about money. But we weren't doing anything. And yeah. my agent, you know, started sending me voiceover auditions. 
I thank God for that because it kind of got me back in alignment with what I was supposed to be doing because I did get distracted by Mm -hmm. doing all of these things because, oh, I wanted to build this portfolio. I wanted to, you know, be this person and be that person and doing well, but it wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. And you look up, you're tired, you're unhealthy, you know what I mean? And then, you know, when the world shut down, God just redirected me and it was like, ah, and you know what I mean? Like, I, like I do have a few things on my plate, but if all I wanted to do was voiceovers, I would be very okay. You know what yes. I mean? I would be fine. Um, and, and it goes back to, that's why I know this is, this is a calling. This is, mm-hmm. a, this is a gift for sure. It truly is a gift. Like your voice is amazing. Like I, when I heard Thank you in you. that story and it's funny because great voiceover actors, what I'm realizing is you almost don't even remember it's a person. Like when I Mm. took your class and you told me (laughs) that MC Light is the voice of God, you know, AKA that announcer you hear you guys and like the Grammys and all this stuff. I never paid attention to that. Mm -hmm. It just went over my head. It was just like a smooth, natural, organic part of the show. Okay, that's who's coming up next. Now I always hear it. It It was like, okay, I want to be the front of the camera. I need, let me, give me, you know, book me for this, book me for that. It was yeah. so I was like, oh, that's cool. Now it's just crazy. Now yeah. all of my friends who are like television working yes. actors, theater working actors, they're like, all right, Kat, what kind of mic I need to get? Like, yeah. <laughs> Like, we all forgot about right. that voiceover bag. Right, right, right. <laughs> tell us, tell us. So, first of all, did you have to get a specific voiceover acting agent or was it an overall acting agent? Okay, so I'll tell you my story with that because there was a pivot for that. Mm-hmm. When I first got to New York, I didn't have an agent at all. Yeah. Um, and it's really hard to get an agent, be to-, to be totally honest. You, a lot of times they don't act, they don't have you soliciting. You can't just call. You can't just go into their office. Um, yes. I always say a good time to get an agent is you have to be doing something. So when mm-hmm. I first got my first agent, I was in a show. I was on an off-Broadway show. And so me and the other girls in the show, we would send out postcards to invite potential agents to, you know, that we want to be signed to, to come to the show. And then one of the girls who already had her agent, she invited her agent to the show. And then that's how, you know, he met me and then I set up a meeting. So that's how I was able to get that agent. That agent, he, uh, he did commercial work, voiceover work, theatrical. He was kind of like all around, which- Eh, it depends on like, it's good, but you, you kind of want to have a, a, a nice diverse portfolio. I think just when mm-hmm. you're in the hustle and bustle of things before you get to like, you know, your status of like, um, uh, I'm established. Um, so I used him for years. I still use him for on camera, uh, commercial work. Uh, but again, COVID came and a friend of mine, I had had a couple of commercials running. I had Gerber running and I had Pillsbury running. And one of my friends, I call her my acting angel. um, (laughs) She always, you know, looking out for me. She's always looking out, cheering me on. Um, And and it's hard to find people like that in the business because a lot of times, you know, everybody's looking at the other person as, Mm -hmm. you know, competition. And, you Mm -hmm. know, it's, that's, that's the business. It is competition. But, you know, when you find that circle where it's like, look, what's for you is for you. And if one of us get it, we all got it. Um, It's, it's, it's a blessing. So my friend Chantal, she just randomly called me (laughs) and we were just, you know, just, just catching up. And then she was like, are you still with such and such? I ain't going to say the other agency. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, girl, yeah, I'm still rocking and rolling with him. And she was like, I'm about to introduce you to my agent. Girl, they are the bomb. They did it. They focus on voiceovers and you did it. Da, 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 da. And she, so she, that night she mm-hmm. made the email introduction. They responded right back to me and say, Hey, we're not, um, we're not signing anyone. It was like the last quarter mm-hmm. uh, of 2020. She, they were like, but you know, we'll date you like let's freelance and then we'll see what happens. I was like, fine. Sent the freelance pack paperwork over, signed it. And then they just immediately start sending me work and it just started to really take yeah. off. And they were like, wait a minute now we need to sign you. <laughs> yeah. And they did. They eventually did. Good old McDonald's. That, that McDonald's. <laughs> we, got, we have but, to talk about that. Oh my Next. God. But so I, I, but I saw that today, that particular agency, they have a commercial department, but mm-hmm. they're very well known for their voiceover department, okay. which is good. Like you, you kind of want to be with the people who, you know, they're reputable in that, in that field. Um, so Got you it. can have an agent that you can have a commercial agent. You can have a legit agent. Legit agent is basically television and film. You can have a theatrical agent, but you can have an agent what they do, where they do everything. Um, but my voiceover agent is solely my voice. They represent me for voiceover work only. 
All right, y'all, it's time to get out of spreadsheets. If you're still using spreadsheets to keep track of things, let me introduce you to HubSpot CRM. With HubSpot CRM, get real-time data at your fingertips so your team stay in sync across the customer journey. Track your contacts and your customers, send personalized emails in bulk, and get the contacts you need to create amazing experiences for your teams and your customers at scale all from one powerful platform. It's why more than 150,000 companies already use HubSpot CRM to run their business better. Plus, HubSpot's user-friendly interface sets you up for success from day one, so you can spend less time managing software and more time on what matters, your customers. There's no better time to get organized. Get started for free at HubSpot.com today. You mentioned the classes you took to improve your technique. Were there other ongoing classes you took just to learn vocal skills and breathing exercises and things like that? So yes and no. I like to switch it up a bit. Again, because uh, I come from the, the the theatrical world and just, you know, I went to school for it. Yeah. You know, you learn, you know, different practices that's, you know, you kind of put in your everyday practice, even when you're working mm. out. You know, I, when I'm <laughs> warming up to work out, I'm always warming up my voice. It's just a part of, you know, just warming up your instrument. But like there's a company right now that they, they do this thing called the voiceover workout every Wednesday mm. at 12 o'clock. Um, I always do that. So it may, it's not necessarily a class, uh-huh. but it's just a voiceover workout where we'll do some warm ups vocally, warm our bodies up, maybe look at some uh, text and, and just play around with some things. So I'll do that. You know, I don't I, I don't I don't want to say I stay in a class 24 seven. I mm-hmm. don't, you know, mm-hmm. but I always make sure I, you know, I just recently finished an on camera class. But so I'm always trying to find different different ways just to kind of keep my instrument, you know, yes. working and, and and knowing what's going on yeah. in the business. And you recommended some classes or, or agencies yeah. to look into during that webinar. And um, yeah. I, I've been looking into some of them as well. I'll link to them, you guys. And then did you work with a separate vocal coach or just do those classes? Um, so, y- yes, I have only worked <laughs> on a one-on-one vocal coach yes. one time. And he was, a, uh, I did a one-on-one with him. Donovan is his name. And he's also a voiceover actor. You may yes. hear him on a lot of like the Today Show stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he does a lot of BT. I he's feel a, like he's I- a, I booked uh, he's one a of his classes. Guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a promo guy. I took one class with him that was one on one. Donovan is amazing. It's like Donovan VO or something like that. Yes, yeah, VO um, coaching with Donovan or something. Yep, 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 yep. I took his. That's for voiceover on camera. Leland Thompson, hands down, is probably the best acting coach that I've ever worked with. He is amazing. Um, his spirit is so right. It's so right. Uh, if you ever needed to get, you know, coaching or practice and figuring out how to really get that, um, that self tape, right. Uh, which everybody's doing these days because it's hard to kind of go in somewhere and audition. Like he's the guy, he is the guy, Leland Thompson. Amazing. See all of those, all those tips. I so appreciate (laughs) as someone who is just exploring this world as, okay, is this a viable side hustle? Is this something I would love to do? I think that for me, when I spoke to you, it was the first time I truly thought to myself, like, you know what? I use my voice like an instrument. My podcast, mm-hmm. the way that God has allowed me to use my voice mm-hmm. is an instrument. So why wouldn't I, even mm-hmm. if I'm not booking anything, why wouldn't I invest in technique and growing yeah. it? And I've thought about this over the years, but I didn't take it seriously. But you truly put the battery pack in my back. Like, let's take and this it's seriously. it's so crazy. Listen, a lot of these commercials, these auditions that I get, they yeah. always give you these specs to tell uh-huh. you like what's the tone that they're looking for, if they're having any references. And a lot, you know, the podcast world is like booming. So a lot of yeah. these auditions are like a podcast feel, like your <laughs> podcast. It's like whatever's in, that's the look that they're going yeah. for. That's the sound that they're going for. Mm-hmm. So like You see a lot of actors, they get all of this training, 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 and they forget their raw self and they forget to bring their raw self to the, to the, to the work. And like, you come in there, you, you're so, you're too polished. It's like, we don't believe you. You need more people. (laughs) 
<laughs> so there you see on these specs, they're looking for the everyday, the podcaster, mm. you know, like this person, the yes. influencer. It's like, so you have to be natural. So like, that, I think I told you that before. Like, yeah, you, you did. And I'm like, like <laughs> well, we, we shall see. But I definitely we want to see. improve and, and learn techniques to yeah. improve tone and quality and just invest in my mm-hmm. instrument, you know? Yeah. So thank you for, if nothing else, showing me that it's time to take that seriously. How do you keep your raw self, though? Because... Isn't it so easy to get lost in, ooh, that she booked that and that sounds good? Like, as yeah. you're hearing sample commercials, to start to emulate that. Oh, absolutely. Um, one of the uh, the greatest things that I, I realized that I needed to do was go home more. What do you mean by I'm, that? I'm originally from Detroit. Okay. Originally from Detroit, Michigan. And it's something about going back to where it all started you know, when mm-hmm. you're you're having conversations with your family, you're around people yes. that's not in the industry. Yes. It, 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 it keeps you grounded. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I have this conversation with my brother all the time because he's out in Vegas. So it's like you're in this <laughs> business. So you don't realize over time, like, who did I become? Like, yeah, and Vegas is not re- a real place. <laughs> oh, my God, at all. But, you know, I, I think about when I would do self-tapes, Mm-hmm. Um, and I talk about this to my friend, uh, one of my acting friends, Drea, a lot. I'm always constantly trying to find myself and my self tapes, whether it's on camera, whether it's voiceover work. Um, because again, like I said, you put, you, you get all of this training and you're so polished, but the real meat of it is the essence of who you are. You know what I mean? Nobody talks like cat. You know what I mean? Nobody has the same pitch as me. You know, like nobody says here like me. You know what I mean? So, and that's what 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 sells your authentic self. Um, so I, I constantly find myself going back home more, um, just being around real people who know me, like the real cat, um, just so that I can stay grounded and to stay raw and not too polished because we all do it. Not even in, even in, in acting, but it's like, you know, corporate people, you know, when they go yes. into those offices, you put on, you know, yes, you're not yes. being fake, but you put on a different You put code. on, you put on. Yeah, you do. You do. Um, sometimes it's unconscious, but I, that's how I kind of stay to who my raw self yes. is. Um, yes. Just the people that I keep around me and the people right. that I, you know, I talk to uh, who know me the best and the most. Yes. yes. Yeah. So yeah. I want to talk about McDonald's mm-hmm. now. First of all, I want to know what was it like booking them? Like, what was that process oh, like? Oh, man. It was a full circle moment, a dream come true. Um, I say that because even going into voiceovers when I was younger, I used to emulate a lot of different things. I always said I wanted to be the Popeye's lady. <laughs> The Cheerios lady, and I wanted to make yeah, I wanted to be the sassy voice for McDonald's, mm. right? So even when I did my reel, my voiceover reel, before I even got an agent, I used to practice this one McDonald's commercial, and I would do it over and over again. And then I was very strategic on getting um, a voiceover agent. I went to a class um, where the agent was teaching, and I, you know, you were supposed to bring some work that you want to practice with. And it was just something that I always worked on. It was a McDonald's script. Yeah. And I pretended like, oh, this is something new that I want to try. <laughs> but no one, I done did this 50 million times. So it was blah, 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 blah. So I did the McDonald's and then she, she, you know, I stayed in contact with her, mm-hmm. ended up not signing with her at the time. But then fast forward, when I got connected to the new agent, um, that I have the first, audition that they sent me was a McDonald's script. Uh, didn't book that one, but I, I all, it was like the McDonald's, it was like the running theme. Like I just wanted the McDonald's. I would always get auditions for them, never book it. Um, and then there was a point where, so I'm a part of the SAG union and, but for many years I would not join the SAG and I wouldn't join it because I felt like, oh, I'm making a, a nice amount of change, uh, doing all of these non-union jobs, you know, where if I join the union, what does that mean? Is it going to be like harder? It's going to be more competition. So I was afraid to join the union because I was afraid I wouldn't be able to hang with the big dogs. Mm. Um, and then also their fees are <laughs> expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and I would never forget, um, I got to the point where I had become a must join. Like I had to join the union. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just kind of prolonged it for so long. And I just remember saying, okay, I'm just going to invest this money. 
I, I, I paid the dues. I even printed out my receipt and put it on like a little on my wall because I'm like, something has got to come to where I can get paid <laughs> that money back. And lo and behold, literally the week I paid to become a SAG member was the week I booked my first it wasn't my first SAG job because I had done SAG jobs, which made me become a must join. But it was my first, I think, big job that had big residuals. And that was McDonald's. So it was like that full circle moment. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't Popeye's, but it was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was McDonald's. Yeah. Um, but it just it felt good. It felt good. And, and I, I do a lot of work with them. Half of the, the, the commercials I never see or never hear. Oh, really? Because um, I do so many of them now. It's like yeah. I, I feel like monthly they'll call me to do some work. But it was, it felt good. That's I, I, amazing. It, was, it was a blessing. What a, a major blessing. brand. And that was something that I feel like I had done other work, but that was yeah. something that the everyday person, people started to like, oh, recognize me as a voiceover artist now. I'm like, oh, now, now people realize I, I, I am actually am a voiceover artist. Yeah. Yes, you know what I mean? Yes. And then was able to help me get even more work. Like that wasn't even from my agent. Mm. Um, one of my friends, um, we went to college together. Uh, she's like a big marketing uh, person for McDonald's corporate. And then I guess she realized that, oh, she's doing the voiceovers for it. And then they had like this big um, conference for all of the marketing teams all across the different countries uh, from McDonald's. And they hired me to be like the the uh, the host, the virtual nice. host. So it was just like that McDonald's just started opening doors. Like people started to recognize yes. that, oh, she's a, a real voiceover. Yes. <laughs> Even and, though and I was doing stuff right here. That, listen, that brand, the brand is strong. The, the brand, brand is branding. Is strong. <laughs> <laughs> What is a residual in voice acting world and mm -hmm. how, yeah, how does it work? Yeah. So residuals is pretty much, um, it's money that you continuously to get every time like they play the commercial. Mm -hmm. So, and most of the time it's not like monthly, it's mm -hmm. pretty much quarterly. Like you'll okay. have a job and it depends on the offer. It depends on the terms and say like, I did this commercial and it's for a one year term mm -hmm. and like every cycle which is probably could be a quarter, uh, six weeks, eight weeks. It, it depends. Um, I guess they'll calculate how many times that was shown and then they'll mm -hmm. pay you based on that number. So it's, it's, it mo it's money that keeps coming based off of that one job that you did. And as someone in this world, mm -hmm. you know, now that you have found a more stable path than some would think for acting, right? How do you kind of predict your monthly income with mm -hmm. residuals and all of that and like, you know, the booking process being so unpredictable. Yeah. Um, to be totally honest, I never really thought that through. So I have like this personal goal of mine and every year I kind of stretch it a little bit more. Yeah. Like there's a certain amount of money that I always kind of give myself. It's like a game to me. I don't know. It's just so <laughs> weird. It's a game. It's like, okay, every month I want to make X amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. And I find that there's some months where I'll exceed that number and some months where I would go, I would go under. Um, but again, if you're doing what God has called you to do, you'll be okay. It's a scary thing. I know yes, because I, there was a reason <laughs> why and there was one point where I was like, let me go into the office and let me focus yeah. full time on producing because I need a, a, a better foundation for my son. I need to yeah. know that this amount is coming every two weeks. Um, so it's very different. And I don't want to sound all like, oh, I just believe God because I do. <laughs> but I, I just really believe that if you're in your purpose, mm -hmm. you know, you, the work will come and the work has come for me. And I thank God it wasn't like that three or four years ago when it came to voiceovers for me. Um, also I, I, I live below my means, you know what I mean? Um, I could get a check with a lot of zeros, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be, okay, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm splurging. Um, I, I, I definitely live below my means and I invest you know, I'm really good with my money. Um, so it's not just like I'm just doing voiceovers and that's it. You know, I've, I have investments, you know, here and there. Um, so it depends on the person you have to get. You have to get creative. But I, I've, I've worked it out to where I, I, I meet my quota monthly. Um, 
And, and okay, so for this, and this is for any, any other artists that are out there, like, you know, how hard are you willing to work? I get auditions on a daily, like on average, about eight or nine, maybe 10 voiceover auditions that I have to record and have them in by the next morning. A lot of times people may look at them like, oh, I'll do this one. I'll do that one. No, I'm going to do all of them. You know what I mean? I'm going to knock them all out. You got to throw, you know, the ball in the ring and see, you know, where it's going to go. So I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> no, because well, I you understand did an, You it. did a more than amazing job because that is what it's about in this kind of line of work. Yeah. This, that's what it's about. Living below your yeah. means, setting goals, reaching them, but not splurging and yep. reinvesting yep. in yourself. Talk a little bit about how you built out your home studio. So you've come oh up in God. the world of, of <laughs> <laughs> recording equipment. Child, because <laughs> when I first started, I had this little $50 snowball mic, yes. which is good. A lot mm-hmm. of people don't know. I booked McDonald's on that little $50 mic. Yes. Yes. So when COVID was here, it was like, okay, we're in the house. And I'm like, I just need to create an atmosphere mm-hmm. that I feel good going into work, especially if I'm going to be at home a lot. Like, you know, I wanted to make sure that I set the atmosphere right. So I have an art studio here in New Jersey. We do a lot of paint and sips and our next door neighbor, he was a carpenter. So I randomly hit him up, you know, like, Hey, you know how to build this? I sent him a picture of a studio that I adored that my friend had. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. And then he charged me like half of the amount of what I'm sure it probably cost. <laughs> it was just, it was a DIY for him nice, as well. Thank you. And it's just an amazing, it's a, it's an amazing setup. Now, when I move, I don't know how I'm going to get that bad boy out. <laughs> the way he built it, it's yes. like, you're going to have to tear this down in here. It was like, what was I doing? Like, what was I thinking? <laughs> like, it's like, it's in my dining room, but my dining room is not my dining room anymore. Mm-hmm. It's literally my studio. So I have yes. a living room. I have a studio and I have a kitchen. I love it. It looks but, but amazing. But even that, you, I wouldn't everybody even have doesn't known. have to. Everybody doesn't have to do that though, because it, no. it wasn't until like after I did all of that, like I stumbled across the eyeball, which is something you put over your microphone where mm-hmm. it feels like you're in a studio and you know it, it, it isolates the sound and things of that nature. And I'm like, I could have just did that, but <laughs> I don't know, it, it, it does feel good to be able to walk into my studio. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm going to work. It's my office. It's my haven. It's, yes. it's it, it, you know, it's it's good for me. And, and everybody in my house knows, like, when I'm in there, either leave or you better go. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, use your space, y'all. You'll be surprised what you yes. can build in your space. Yes. You know, I'm, I, I record in the closet. In the closet. A bunch I'm of in the closet me, still. Listen. <laughs> Listen, I love my little closet. All right. I started in the living it's room. Perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. And listen, I, to this day, I still could do it in the closet. Like I just, you know, it was COVID, yeah. you know, yeah. we, I had time to sit and think and say, Hmm, what can, what can right. I do? No, but I yeah, love that it. closet was my best friend. Yes. <laughs> so before we jump into the lightning round, I'm just curious, mm-hmm. your path has had a lot of pivots and changes, Mm -hmm. knowing Mm -hmm. what you know now. Is there anything Mm -hmm. you would have done differently on your path as you structured your education and the different things that you pursued? Is there anything you would tell young Um, cat? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, (laughs) Anything that I would tell young cat, Mm -hmm. you are enough. Mm. You have everything you need. You have everything you need. Everything. In your rawest, truest self, you yes. have everything you need. You are everything. Yes. And that's what I would tell myself. Um, yeah, that, that that's it. I wouldn't change anything because looking back, everything, everything worked out for my good. You know, even I remember when I, I, it was a real struggle for me because I, I was the girl that was good at a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And when I was working in Philly, I remember literally just in tears, crying out to God, like, you know, I'm, I'm confused. Like, I, I want to do this, but I want to do this. I have all of these gifts, but yeah. I don't want to be the jack of all trade and a master Mm-mm. of none. What am I supposed to do? And I just surrendered. You know, I surrendered. And looking back, I realized that I just remained present in every season that I was in. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to miss the point that God was trying to make in every season that I was in. There was a season where I was 
touring all different countries yes. and just having a ball. Then there was a season where I remember when I had my son, it was my greatest pivot. Mm-hmm. When I had my son, I was still running to all these auditions and then I realized he turned one. I said, I, I need a different type of structure for him because I'm not delivering just for me now. I can move and shake how I want, but I need a different structure. So I started, I went into the office and I worked um, at a production company. We did a lot of live shows and tours mm-hmm. and things. And I thought it was going to be one way. And I realized it was, <laughs> I, I want to say it was the worst experience, but it was the absolute best experience for me because the tools that I got working there, God set me down. I wasn't all doing this, doing all of this and that. Like he set me down and then I was able to rebuild a foundation that I could really stand firm on. You know, I think about the man that I I, I, I supported every day, Michael Cole. Like, I thank God that I, he, he connected me to him to sit and support this man. I was able to see this wealthy man and how he balanced his life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now with all of the things that I have going on, some of the traits that he used, like just even how he started his day, yeah. you know what I mean? How if anybody called, he didn't take the call, but if it was his children, he would stop, you know, mm-hmm. like he knew how to balance life. Um, even when it came to investments, oh my God, like I, I lost millions. Of, <laughs> I lost so much money from <laughs> from I investments. So, I'm just, a little quick short story. Do we have time? Yes, we do. <laughs> I, I knew nothing about stocks. I knew nothing about shares. Uh-huh. But a part of my job was to support him in all of his business ventures. Mm-hmm. So he sat on a lot of boards for cannabis companies. And he had these shares. Like It was like $6 million worth of shares. And there was a point where he wanted to split the shares and put some in his children's name, some in the company's name, some in his name. So I had to get the share, send them back out to the company. The company was in Canada. Mm -hmm. And so what did I do? I prepared all of the shares. I put them in a FedEx uh, packet. I gave it to the intern. I told the Mm -hmm. intern to go and drop it off at the FedEx box. It's easy, right? It's right downstairs. Weeks go by. I'm looking in the system and it's nothing showing up. So I'm getting a little nervous. So I'm like, okay, let me just go and tell them. So I go into the office. I said, the shares never made it to the office so I didn't realize that those pieces of paper were, they were like checks. They were worth millions of wow. dollars. And one Ooh. thing I learned about that is I was honest with him. Mm-hmm. I was honest. I told him exactly what happened. And then I didn't get fired, thank God. But he was like, you know why I'm not firing you? He was like, because you were straight up with me. Mm. He was like, you didn't bull crap me. You were straight up with me. I mean, I, I, I went off. Long story short, the shares came up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they found Ooh, the shares, oh. but it would have cost, I want to say like $200,000 to um, get new shares. It was yeah. really, really bad. Wow. But I mean, I'm just thinking about the How times where I felt like his... I was in, yeah, yeah. And just that, that season of my life, I'm like, I'm working. I'm somebody's assistant. Like, you know what I mean? Yep, we yep. we kind of get that ego. And yeah. it was like, no, like don't miss the point of this season. I mm-hmm. thought I was going to get in there and they was going to put me, they were going to let me produce Yo Gabba Gabba Live where I remember we did the Oprah tour. They're going to put the only black girl on as a producer. <laughs> no, you ain't even going. Like, and I was just like so frustrated. You're going like, to stay in the office. You're going to stay in the office. I've been what there. What a humbling I've been there. experience. Yes. yes. But it was all of the other Things that I learned mm-hmm. about how he started his day, yep. how he managed his schedule, mm-hmm. uh, how he managed his money. I had access to all of that. Yes. And just looking back to some of the things and the business ventures that I'm, I'm getting into now, it just all makes sense. So I, I, I bring that back to just staying present in every season Knowing when that season is up that. as well. I you feel, know what I, I mean? feel like doing a whole like mini solo episode on just that point, staying present oh in the God. season that you're in. in the, yes. There's no season that doesn't have a purpose, right? Like <laughs> there's so many foolish None. things we go through and we're like, why mm-hmm. am I here? <laughs> why I am I to here? School. What am I doing here? Doing this. Yep. Like I'm yep. talking about, I took steps back. I was an office assistant. I was just mm-hmm. doing things that I was like, why am I here? But Man. Later on, it will make sense. It, there's it's no make season total without purpose. Sense. And I even think back to when I was in Philly in that hotel room crying out to God, like, I want to produce, but I want to act, but I want to do all of this. And just now looking back on my life, all of these different things that mm-hmm. I did, 
it's the picture that I'm creating. Like, yes. it's like, wow, like I, I, I had this bag and I was just putting tools in them as mm-hmm. I went. You know, and it wasn't just like physical things. It's just like my spirit yes. was just like he was building my character. Yes. So you got to stay in that season for the full amount of time that God wants you to be there mm-hmm. and just say, God, what, what is the point that you're trying to make in this yes. season? Yes. Um, so, yeah, man. Now we're going to do a quick lightning round. You just answer yes. the first thing that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Short and sweet. All right. You ready? Ooh, okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Number one, what is a resource that has really helped you on this path that you can share with the Side Hustle Pro audience? I'll stick it specifically to voiceovers. hmm online. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when you're watching YouTube videos and things, don't skip those ads. You know, I constantly are listening to what's going on. I'm constantly like following other voiceover artists um, just so I can hear different things that people have. When I get something and I don't book it, I'll go back and try to find the commercial to figure out like, oh, what were they looking for? Just so I can get a different perspective. Number two, who is a black woman, non-celebrity black woman entrepreneur who you would want to switch places with for a day just to be a fly on the wall, learn some things (laughs) and why? Non-celebrity? Non-celebrity. Because I was going to say MC Light. Give me that Right? Okay. Okay, I think we'll make an exception for MC in this case. It's like one. Like, I am no I MC Light. I want to know. Just one. I want to like, know, like, I, I same questions I have for you. I want to know, like, did she start to work on her technique? Does she have a coach? Or is that just her, like, That's doing her thing, I, you know? I think you should reach out to her I and think really I try to get her on there. I'm curious. Number three, what is a non-negotiable part of your day? I have to be still. It's this it's a rat race out here. Oh, yeah. That's just it. I have to be still and just sit quiet with my thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, number four, what's a personal habit that you think has significantly contributed to your success? Putting myself first. I am mm. so intentional about my total wellness. And when I say total, I mean like my complete wellness, my mind, my body, my spirit. It's a lot but it's Mm -hmm. necessary. It's so necessary. You know, we talk about self-care a lot, but you know, my self-care is making sure that I honor God in everything I do in my thoughts and Mm -hmm. what I put in my mouth. Yes. You know what I mean? And and, and what I do, how I speak to people. Um, And that's all a part of wellness. Mm -hmm. It's all a part of wellness. I love it. And then finally, what is your parting advice for fellow women entrepreneurs, fellow women artists? actors Mm. who want to go down this path but are worried about not having a steady paycheck? I feel like first figuring out why you're worried because if you, going back to your why, if you know what your why is, you know your purpose in life, you'll never lack for anything. You'll never lack for anything. You won't get distracted in doing all of the other things that You know, it looks good. It seems fun. You see somebody else do it. So you want to do it. If you go back to your why and know why you were created and just be aware of just your daily habits. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think I think our future is hidden in our practice. So what do we practice every day? Mm. It'll show us where we're going to go. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So just kind of look at what you're spending most of your time doing every yes. day. Yes. You hear that, guys? I think what you just reminded me of too, Kat, is I think one of the reasons the whole purpose and your why thing can be so daunting of a question to answer, mm-hmm. you know, which is why I kind of tell people to like chill with trying to figure out the purpose all the time. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. but do tap into what is motivating you, what's driving you, what's exciting mm-hmm. you. So tap into that and then also stop taking things that you do well for granted. If we could <sighs> all good. just stop doing that, that would lead us closer to truly understanding our gifts. Because it'll open up what your gifts really are. Yep. It's like we we do the, it's like, oh my God, we do so much. And then you realize, like, again, going back to what would I tell my younger self? Yep. You already had everything you needed. Already had, you had it. everything you needed. It was you already in going you. For commercials in high school, junior high like, school. Like you have everything you needed. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And even more so, like going after this, like mm-hmm. just who you are as a person, like yes. those things will attract you. And it's in those those things will always change. So mm-hmm. be open. Open to that change and know that 
there's going to be shifts and changes in what you do, but that doesn't change who you are. Yes. You know, it's just like, what is your gift? What is yes. your purpose? And again, it, it doesn't really always have to do with what do you do for work? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just who are you at the core? Right. You know, and how are you honoring God in that? You know, how are you honoring God? A word. You know. So, Kat, where can people connect with you and continue to Ooh. get your wisdom after this episode? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> I am I'm on Instagram at Cat Peoples. Uh, that's Cat with a C and people with the S on the end. And no, I do not like cats. <laughs> I'm allergic to them, actually. Um, uh, I have a website, uh, catpeopleslive.com. I'm actually launching um, a masterclass that people can Yay! get online. Finally, it's almost done. Yay. So probably by the time this is up and running, it'll be available. So you'll find yes. it at Cat People's or Live. Or we'll sign up for the wait list. All right. Yes. Put up that wait list. Com. There you go. <laughs> Boom. Look at you helping me. Yes. Because <laughs> that ain't my gift. <laughs> Because I just loved your class. Listen, I'm taking it Thank again. You. Like I'm, I'm paying oh, for yes. whatever, whatever you're doing. Thank I'm you. I'm paying for it. Thank so, you, you Thank know, you. I got to promote you. <laughs> yes, that's it. If you're in on the East Coast, I have Art Exo Studios. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of paint and sips here. Come holler at us. Um, and then, yeah, just stay tuned. I have some very special things that are happening yes. in like a, the next couple of months that I'm excited about. I so can't wait. Keep up. Keep All up right. Here. Well, Kat, thank you so much for being in the guest chair. Thank like you. I said, you have enlightened me and it's just such a pleasure to be able to bring this to the Side Hustle Pro Show as well. Yes. And I hope that it has enlightened y'all in the same way it did for me. And I will talk to you next week. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six bullet Saturday newsletter at sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter. When you sign up, you will receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon.